Uh, Nikki Smith uh, joins us. She has a Master's of Fine Arts from University of Tennessee, 2006, and a Bachelor of Fine Arts from the University of Miami from 2003 in theatrical costume design. Ms. Smith has worked on everything from Broadway to the Metropolitan Opera, and you can find her most recent work on season three of Hulu's Rami, and the pilot episode of Excess, FX's Kindred, and soon on the new musical, Up Here. Thank you for joining us today. <laughs> So that first video, let's just start, that's a very different time. As you can see from the people who are in the video, they don't represent the people. It's a very white passing video. Even the way that they speak of the costume designer only as she, like that's very limiting. And like, I just want to start by saying that is not the world which I design in, and that's really like not the world that I relate to. I don't really want a bunch of old white people to really be anything about anything. <laughs> so <let's just> yeah. <laughs> very, very. <laughs> well, I would wonder if you could start off by just talking us through your career path from, from really from college and your getting your master's all the way through to today. So I originally went to school with the idea that I wanted to be a neurosurgeon. I'm first gen American, and you know your family's like we want you to do something that's either law or medicine, something that will give you a sustainable career. And I got to school and I was like, I really hate pre-med. I took a theater class and I was like, this is vibes, this is what I should be doing. And just switched my major at 18. Like, had never done theater, had never really seen any theater, but it just felt right, so I took a chance. Um, and then from there, I went to graduate school and I studied theater internationally. I took a crazy ton of drawing school and like, it was not the best time ever. Like, school is sometimes very rough for some people and grad school was very rough for me. But I stuck through it and then ended up working at like the Metropolitan Opera, working on a Broadway show, and kind of from there went to work for MTV because I felt like doing period costume is great, but people don't always want to see period costume on TV. And I wanted to have more styling background and like what is modern fashion, what do people find commercially viable. I ended up working on things like RuPaul's Drag Race, like the promo campaign for season two for All Stars. Um, everything from Pop-Tarts commercials, all of that played to where I am now. I worked as an assistant on The Americans, on Pose, on a number of projects, and when the pandemic hit, I was like, I don't want to work for anyone anymore. It's time for Baby Girl to step out, and that's how I found myself as a lead designer. Awesome, amazing. <laughs> <laughs> so in between college and getting your master's, you worked at the Metropolitan Opera, or did you no, I worked at the Met after I finished grad school. Graduate school. It was like my first real job. Oh, okay, okay. But, but you always worked in theater design. Theater. Yeah, yeah, I don't have any other skills. It's <laughs> literally one thing. <Yeah. laughs> it's a pretty good skill to have. Um, and how did, you, how did you get the first job at school? Because I always feel like that's the hardest, particularly in this industry, breaking in. My first job out of school was after working as an intern at Glimmer Glass Opera. I'm a firm believer that you should promote yourself, go up to people, talk to them, be in their faces. Like, if you meet someone, send a follow-up email, do all those things. Like, that's how I approached it. Like, I wanted to make sure that people didn't forget me, that I was on the tip of their tongues when they were thinking of who could we have to fill this position. Even if I knew I was overqualified for the position, I thought about like what connections and who would I meet from it and who could help me get the next job. So working there led to me getting a job at the Met because that's where all the Metropolitan Opera staff worked in the summer. So it's all about hustle, it's all about who you know. Sometimes it's about your resume, but honestly, very rarely. Yeah. <laughs> um, what does an entry level job in costume design typically look like? Now I would say the entry level jobs are mostly production assistant PA jobs and they aren't fun. You really work hard, but what you do learn is the system of film, the system of theater, the system of TV. And with that, you can then figure out where in that department you find yourself. Like you may work on a show and feel like, I just want to build things. I don't want to do costume design. I just want to do the wardrobe end and like make beautiful hats, make beautiful gowns. That's how you find it out as a PA. Or you may find out, I just want to work in accounting. I want nothing to do with costumes. That's where you find it. Um, I, I've heard from other costume designers who've come in. Um, actually, 
actually, I think Maria, who yeah. you're, you're friendly with, uh, she said she skipped over the PA job and she actually felt like it was a disservice to her um, coming from the industry and then over. So I didn't, I didn't work as a PA specifically, but when I worked for MTV, I was like the baby assistant, so it was like a game show, and they'd be like, oh, someone threw up on themselves, you should go clean it up. So that was like my equivalent of a PA job. <laughs> and like do all the returns, do the paperwork. So like learning that and kind of like, yes, it's paying your dues, but you're really understanding the way things run so that when you're in charge, you can say, you know what, when I was a PA, I really hated this. I don't want my PAs to do that. Yeah, yeah, it's good. So it's good to have yeah. yeah. So um, you go from a PA to typically what's kind of the... PA, then coordinator, or sometimes you go to a shopper. And the coordinator is basically like the business manager of the office. They're the ones who do all the incoming. They make sure like if things have to go to Europe to be fit for, you know, Gerard Butler. That's the only time they can see him. The coordinator works with the designer and the production office to figure out how to get things there. It's not a glamorous job, but it is a central job. And then the work of a shopper is just that. You shop, you figure out fabrics, you work with the designer to kind of gauge what is the look and the feel they want of the show, and then you go out and make it happen. Sometimes you have money, sometimes you don't have money. Yeah. And the shopper will also have to then return the Not necessarily. The PA is the PA Yeah, because okay. the shoppers we pay them way really too much money to have the returns. Okay. <laughs> and yeah, when is the, I mean, the union is a really big part of industry. So when is that, when do you usually enter it? For me, I waited until I had a new job because I didn't want to pay the dues for something I wasn't a part of. Um, I think when you find that you are losing out on something because you're not in the union, that's the time to join the union. I don't think it's something you should just do fresh out of school because you may not want to be a costume designer, then you waste your time and your money. Um, the union is really good because it protects us. It's like a collective bargaining agreement. So whereas they would say, I only want to pay this person $60 an hour, but I like this person, so I'm going to give them $70 an hour. The union makes sure that we are all on the same page, that we get equal playing fields so that there's no, supposedly, that it eliminates racism, any kind of factors where people pit others against each other, gives a base rate, but you know, all things are not perfect. So ideally, they're choosing on talent, not yes, yes. more than that. Yes. Um, but correct me if I'm wrong, isn't there a certain level where you have to be in the union to be hired? Or, or it depends on the... Yes, so it depends on the contract of the film. Like if it's a majors, if you're doing anything that you see awarded, an Academy Award, if it's shot in the country, it is definitely a union job. Um, there are some indies that are not union jobs that go on to be nominated, but they're usually like foreign films and other realms like that. Um, so after coordinator shopper, typically moves up to ACD, ACD, which is an assistant costume designer. And usually the ACD, it depends on what level. There's first, there's a second, there's a background ACD, there's a made to order ACD, sometimes there's a uniform ACD, it depends on the project. My last one, I had two ACDs, a first and a second one we did with background and dancers. And then the design. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. And I touched on the concept of wardrobe. I know there's two different units for the mm -hmm. costume design and the wardrobe um, department. How do those typically interact? So I'm in 829, which is the New York Design Union. There's 892, which is the West Coast Design Union, which is where most of the bigger projects come out that we see for movies that are nominated. You know, a lot of the TV shows that are nominated also come from the West Coast. And there's 764, which is a wardrobe union. So they're in charge of building the clothes, maintaining the clothes, maintaining continuity. And continuity is when we take photos of things so we can go back to it in three months, in two days, and we can remember, oh, we cuffed this, and we did this really cool thing with the bracelet. Because I'm not gonna remember it, they're not gonna remember it, so we take photos and document it. It's kind of like fashion CSI. Like we do all these close-ups and make sure we get all the angles and all the details, and that's their job. Yeah. Yeah, keeping it consistent. Um, so uh, you also had a degree in theatrical design, but also did theatrical design. Yeah. I mean, my experience with these conversations is typically people are one or the other, but we're, we're lucky enough that you're facing us with both. Um, can you tell us about the differences between stage and film? 
So stage, you have more time to work on it. You have a tech period where you sit down and figure out, can they rip off this dress on set? How do they rip it off? What's the choreography of it? With TV, it's really fast. Like, you don't get real rehearsal time. It's either make it or break it. If it doesn't work, maybe you get five minutes to re-rig it. Probably you don't, and you have a DP screaming at you. <laughs> That's never happened to me. <laughs> um, and then for a film, which is the most ideal project, you get a really lengthy prep period where you can do research, where you can do tests. So you may, you know, build a costume, do a t TV test, which is basically they'll film it, send it to the studio, and they're like, you know what, I think it should be red. So then you have to go back and redo the whole thing in red, and then they'll shoot it again for a test. So that's the joy film. It's like a more lengthy prep period than TV, and theater is kind of a slower period, it's not usually as large of a scale, and you can be in previews on Broadway show anywhere from three weeks to like four months, depending on the scale of the show. Yeah, and once you have done your initial design for theater, what what's your role on like a day-to-day -day basis? It depends on the show. Like, usually you go and you sit in, in prep and in tech, and you make adjustments as needed, but once the show opens, like it really becomes the assistant's job when they have like, Michelle Williams is coming in to play the role of whoever for this play. Whoever the new person is that's on board and the ACD will help with the fittings, will help reshop things, shops will rebuild things to fit them because they can't go into a costume that was worn by someone else. Um, when there's a remount, the ACD and sometimes the designer comes back. When there's a national tour, the ACD gets flown across the world to do the national tour. The designer, depending on what it is, like my friend is the sound designer on Hamilton. He did the Australian tour, he did do the London tour. The ACD got to do all of that. So that's the difference. Yeah. Um, and tell us about getting a theatrical design degree. Did you, have you felt that it's been super important? that you have that or, or you know? <laughs> Sometimes it feels important. Other times it feels like you can learn it just by doing it. Um, I think for me, like, I didn't have the base that a lot of my other theater peers did. Like, I didn't really know Shakespeare that well. I didn't know all this stuff because that's not my culture. Like, I'm not sitting around reading plays. But going to graduate school, going to undergrad, kind of taught me that foundation of like, how to break down a character. Like my fabric knowledge is on par with, I'm sure some of you guys, which a lot of my counterparts don't have because they didn't go to school for it. So like the way that we learn construction in school, the way that we learn building, even the way that we learn, you know, taking a pattern off of an existing garment, a lot of people don't learn that unless they go to school. So I'm very grateful for that. But at the same time, like, if you have the skill, you have the skill. It doesn't matter what you you have. You can fall off the truck. If you have the skill, you have the skill. Yeah. 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 <laughs> and and are, do you come across a lot of people that came from the industry, from the fashion industry? I do. I do. I have a lot of friends that started out as RISD kids. You know, they went to SCAD and now they're costume designers because it's you're building a character with shape and form and a lot of that translates into fashion. Just like understanding the body, understanding the way clothes work, the way clothes move, and how to put looks together that tell a story that could either be completely distracting or completely disappear. Yeah, yeah, that's great. Um, so how do you usually go about finding a new project once you've wrapped up an old project? Well, what you should ask? It's not like you can really go on LinkedIn. I feel like it's not the same thing as uh, It's not. As I, industry. I mean, it's. It depends on the job, it depends on where you are in your career. I am a younger designer, so it's a lot of who you know, who's not working, who's a friend of a friend. I'm all about like, let's get a drink, let's talk about what are the new projects. A friend just mentioned that Holly Berry has something, like an Indian in North Carolina. I was like, throw my name in, like, I don't care. <laughs> it's a lot of put my name in, give me an opportunity sort of thing. But when you get to a certain level, people start calling you based on, oh, I saw this, you know, Movie and I thought you did a really great job. I would love to have you work on this project. So not quite there yet. But yeah. So and, and, um, and so when you get your name thrown into something, do you end up having to prepare or something to be interviewed, or is it more that they look at your password? A little bit of both. Like for me, I always feel like I want to put myself ahead of everyone else. So I'll do boards. I'll do initial 
designs just to give them an idea of like my take on the character. Yeah. I have friends that are like, I'm not doing anything. Unless you pay me, I'm not into it. Yeah. So it's kind that of like, how much you want the job. Right, it really depends on yeah. what, like how much you want the job and how much they want you. Because if they're coming to you with, I think you should have this job, then do you really need to do that much? <laughs> yeah. yeah. You, know, you just kind of have to show up. Yeah, yeah. Um, what are you working on now? I'm working on myself. <laughs> I'm currently unemployed. But I'm actually working part time for my friend of FBI Most Wanted. So one of the good things about being in the union is just because you're not designed doesn't mean you can't do union work. So I come in and I dress prisoners, I dress lawyers, like whatever it is that they need, I come in and do as the additional ACD. So it still brings in money, it still brings in my health and pension, and it keeps me floating until I get my next job. Yeah. Um, you also have a makeup credit on IMDb. I do? I don't know. I don't know. That's actually yeah. a costume credit. Okay. Yeah. Right. Well, I was going to ask <laughs> what, that was, like what that meant. Yeah, I know. I was, I was surprised to see that, but okay. <laughs> <laughs> so when you're on project, what does a typical week look for it like for you or, you know, through the process? For like that's um, for me, work. like, my philosophy is if it's on camera for the first time, I should be there to establish it. I don't expect people to know how I want the jacket to fit, how I want the pants to look. So I will do fittings, I will go to set, make sure I'm the one with the DP, with the director saying, this is what it should look like. If they want to change it and I'm there, I can say, yes, we should change it. And sometimes I say, no, we shouldn't. Like, this is really what it should be. I have no problems telling anyone that it is my favorite word in the English language. Um, I oversee the budget, I'll have my ACD draw it up, but I'm the one who has the final say on it. I don't have time to typically go shopping. If I can, I'd love to, but it's just sometimes too much show to do that. So I review shopping that my shopper brings in. I give notes. Sometimes it's great, sometimes it's not. Uh, I also work with my wardrobe shop, my tailoring shop. Like As they're building things, we'll check in and be like, do you want these pleats to sit here? Which way do you want the fabric to go? Here's that element of it too. And then they're sending notes to the directors and sending notes to my wardrobe crew. I want to make sure that everybody knows what's in my head because I don't expect people to be my leaders. Yeah. And theory, so that's kind of like a typical um, week, I guess, yeah. so when you're on set. But what, you, what, what does your process look like? How do you get started? How do you get inspired by these characters or you know, find out? Um, it starts with me reading the script, and full disclosure, I smoke a lot of weed when I design. It really like mm -hmm. helps me get into who these people are in a way that it just helps my brain flow. And for me, it's like I start with my research, and my research can be Pinterest, it can be Instagram, it can be fashion magazines, it comes from wherever. And then what I basically make is like a mood board, a collage that helps define the character. And then from there, I'll take that forward and maybe I'll do sketches, but if it's modern, I sit down with my shopper and we figure out where can we find these pants? Where can we find the cheaper version of these pants if we need to? Do we have to build these? And then we kind of do a cost analysis of how much it costs. And then from there, we present that to the director in the design meeting. We get, yes, it looks great, go ahead with the character, or I actually just like this shirt, but not these pants. Can we find something else? So for me, it is very important to have a visual reference point because we're all visual artists and to just talk about colors and ideas verbally doesn't really help us because my color of blue may not be your shade of blue and then we're gonna play ourselves and we're on camera and we all have the wrong thing. So using like a visual starting point anchors everyone to who the character is. So then from there we shop, we build, we cobble, we do a fitting and that's usually how we get our costumes on camera. That's great. Yeah. Answer your question. yeah. <laughs> Do you feel like um, uh, what I said was true about the historical accuracy versus modern day? Or no, it's all hard. Yeah. It's all hard. Yeah. <laughs> it's all hard yeah. because you have you know, an actor who feels a certain way about a character, you have a director who has an idea about a character, you have budget, sometimes you're working in Savannah, Georgia, you don't have access to the clothes you would have in New York, you wish you had the vintage, like, there's always something that makes it a challenge. Um, it can be a different challenge based on historical accuracy, but it's all hard. Yeah, yeah, unfortunately. Yeah. <laughs> and one of the things that I think it sounds like the hardest part of this job is that you're a very creative person, or people who find themselves 
themselves and surround them with more creative people. And you're really um, charged with rolling up to a budget, uh, which a typical designer, I feel like in fashion, it's not really their expertise. They get someone else has to deal with that. Yeah. Um, and do you have any you know tips or comments about that process? Um, I would say that. The way we do things in New York, the designer is in charge of the budget. The way they do things in California, the wardrobe supervisor is in charge of the budget. So there are designers in LA who don't really know how much things cost. In New York, we have to know because that's our opinion, that's where the union works. Um, I don't believe that budget should ever impede my designs. I will find a way to make it work. I think when you're looking at the bottom line too much, it really affects your thoughts. So I take the fashion approach of it, like what is the thing that I want to be? What's the ideal beautiful thing that I want to see? Or sometimes the ugly fucked up thing that I want to see. And how do we do it? Like what is the way to make it happen? And sometimes it's like, okay, why don't we thrift it and then we'll paint into it. We'll, you know, custom paint an anchor or something on the back of the slutter jacket to give it the vibe and make it look like, you know, some kind of a song knockoff. Like we have to find ways to make it work. So I start with my design and then we figure out how to make it work long term. Yeah. Have you ever had to go ask for more money? All the time. <laughs> All the time. And like you just ask. If they say no, then you say, Well, you can't have it. Yeah. Yeah. That's your <laughs> loss. Um, how many people are typically on a team? Um, it depends on the project, it depends on the budget. For Rami, it was myself, one ACD, a part-time shopper, tailor, and wardrobe crew, and PAs and a supervisor. For up here, we had a whole tailor and staff, we had a background ACD, we had, I think, about 17 people total on the crew. So it really depends on the show. Like on Basil, there's three people in costume shop. Yeah. Will work for <laughs> um, wait, did you work on it? Or no, no, no you just know. Everyone yeah. knows everyone, so yeah. you don't yeah. know what's going on. Um, <laughs> what's been your favorite project that you've worked on? It's a tie between Rami, just because I think it was my first full series, and it was just really exciting to work with all these really cool actors, and there was a lot of allowance in my voice as a designer to be heard, and the work that I did for Drivers All Star Camp. It's still what's on. Yeah. Very fun. <laughs> uh, where, what did you do for them? Uh, I was the lead stylist on the season two All Star Camp. Oh, okay. That sounds like a very different process, probably. It, it all is the same in that you're creating a moment of character. Sometimes it's anchored in a script, which is, you know, for episodic, for film. And sometimes it's anchored in who the person is, which is for style, which is, yeah. you know, I have my idea of who I see them as, they have their ideas, and like, usually I just present more. and. For drag race, like they would give us an idea of like, I think so and so is going to wear this dress, or they have this thing, or sometimes they had nothing, and I would come up with the base dress and the accessories and who the character was. But it's one of those things where if your goal is to a make the actor, the persona comfortable, feel good, be able to do their job, then I think you're always going to hit it out of the park. And it's kind of the same even goal. Yeah, yeah. What was the most challenging? Kindred. And because it was in LA, I had not worked in LA at that level, and it was right as we were starting to come out of the pandemic, so we still had a lot of restrictions on what we could do, like how we could be around each other, and it was a period and modern show, which was a little wild. Yeah, yeah. So you've worked in LA and New York, or any other cities? Um, I've worked in Tel Aviv, Israel, oh. and I've worked in Atlanta. Okay. Yeah. A lot. There's a lot of them. Yeah. yeah. Can you? Is there any sort of major personality difference between working in all these cities? I mean, obviously, you've oh, yeah. Differences for LA yeah. and New York. Yeah. I would say Atlanta is a little more ragtag in that they don't have the union strength that we have. So one day your customer could be a hairstylist, like at the mall. Then the next day they're your customer. They were a postman, and then you're your customer. It's a right to work. Like if you get the job, it's yours. Um, I would say in Israel, they didn't have the structure that we have. It was more like on an indie level. 
but we had one of the best crews and just the way that they do things it's just very different um, uh -huh. they didn't have a wardrobe truck that we had we had to build a truck and turn it into a wardrobe truck and it was very interesting yeah. <laughs> very interesting <laughs> um, why were you what was the project in Tel Aviv yeah. it was a Netflix show called Hit and Run oh. one season that's it you know you never know what to do you think, no seriously, you think like, oh, this could go on for three seasons, or you think maybe it'll just be a pilot, and the next thing you know, you're on the show for seven years, or, you know, the show ends after the first season. It's always kind of like, take it as it comes, enjoy it while it's happening. You never know what tomorrow's going to be. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, who is most interesting person you met? Me, myself. Yeah. <laughs> no, seriously, like when I come onto a job, if the actors, if the talent, if the celebrities are not happy to see me, I'm not happy to see you either. Like, we're all here to work, we're all here to do our jobs, we're all here to collaborate. I'm just excited to work with people who are there to take it seriously, to do the work that needs to happen. Like, for example, everyone says, like, what was it like working with Bella and me? We did a Zoom and I was like, These, this is what I'm presenting. It's not attractive, like it's gonna be tight, it's gonna be un unattractive flats, like if it's unfortunate looking, you're probably gonna wear it. And she was totally down. And that's why I was excited to work with her because she's like, put me in whatever. I'm more concerned with being the character and less being a supermodel. Yeah. So for me, like that attitude of collaboration makes me excited and interested to work with someone. Yeah, that's great. Um, tell us about a time that you made a mistake and I don't know if there's ever really mistakes. I think things happen the way they're supposed to. So when you take that approach to it, if it goes left, you're like, okay, it's going left. This is what it's supposed to do. How can I make this a moment? And I just don't really think there are mistakes. Like, there are things that I look at on camera that I'm like, I wish we would have done this, but no one knows that it was something else. So it's kind of like, yeah. does it really matter? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Why are you passionate about this? I'm passionate about it because it allows me to have an artistic voice that tells a story, brings people into a world that is outside of their own, and working in film and television, and to the extent theater and styling, it allows people who, you don't know, normally don't have a seat at the table to have a seat at the table and to have our voices heard. Costume design, specifically, is one of the most diverse departments on set. It's where you find the most women, the most queer people, the most non-binary people. Like they usually end up working in costume design and wardrobe. And getting to foster an environment where I can have everyone who's other. Like I never want my shop to be one type of person. It's really rewarding to have diversity and to see that and to foster that and create an artistic environment in that diversity. It's really special. Yeah. What do you, to, to that end, uh, what do you think are really important qualities for people to possess in your field? Patience, um, having kindness for yourself, having kindness for others. Like, the hours are really long, everyone's really exhausted. Um, holding space is really important, and working really hard. Like, if you don't know it, it's okay. You can say, I don't know it, ask the question, but don't ever assume, I think is a big thing. Uh -huh. and really just like being a chill person. Like, it's just not that serious. We're not saving lives. It's just for people who don't exist. Like, none of these people are really people. <laughs> yeah. It's all arbitrary. Just like kind of staying in the moment and keeping your head level. Yeah. Uh, you're spending a lot of time with people, so you yeah, want to be able to have fun. Sustainability is obviously an ongoing theme throughout the, the our, our buildings here and the industry as a whole. Mm -hmm. um, are there any things that are unique to costume design from a sustainability standpoint? I think designers of my generation are really big on vintage and thrift things, just because I don't always want to have what's in store, what's on trend. Sometimes we can't afford it, sometimes it's not the right look. Like post-pandemic, everything looked really sad in the stores. There was a lot of gunny sack, like loose things, and that's not really what I wanted. So I did a lot of vintage to make sure that I had a shape that looked interesting. I had silhouettes that looked really cool. That was one of my goals. Um, 
And then with sustainability, with fast fashion, you're getting things that are better quality, things that are made well, like you can find vintage, I don't know, Valentino, vintage Ferragamo, like things that you would never be able to recreate, you can find it through vintage and Yeah, any favorite places to shop? Not really. You like, want to share? <laughs> honestly, it's, it's all a hunt. Yeah. Like you're either going to a Goodwill on, what is it, the one that's on 40 whatever, whenever they have a coat sale, or you're digging through the bargain bin at Saks. Like maybe I can find something here. Like it's all hidden this. I really think, I think about character first and then resource after. Yeah. Have you utilized any of these like large warehouses that are made for costume? Yeah, I actually have a friend that works at Western Costume. It's like when they just went to LA, she works in their research library. So when Edith had was pretending to look through books, that was Western Costume. That's not really her own personal library. Yeah. Um, so like I've worked out there, I've seen their stuff out there. Um, I'm trying to think if we have any more work in what we used to. I I will work anywhere, I will go anywhere. So if it's like, you know, there's an asset center in Connecticut where you can drive out and get old shows. Like they have things from like the Americans, that's where they send all their stuff. So if you need 80 stuff, you're like, can I go to the asset center and dig out, you know, stuff from succession, stuff from other shows? That's another thing that's really cool. Uh, that's awesome. That's awesome. Um, you mentioned as we first went up that you've been here to go to the FIT library to do research. Yeah. So that sounds like it would be a good resource to know about. It. How, how did that process work? So it was when I was in graduate school and the person who we were with had a friend knew like either Kalyan or someone like through who used to pull from the FIT library. A lot of the designers do, which y'all know, they never knock it off. And then put a new price tag on it with fabric. No, <laughs> So like getting to see like some of the archival pieces, it's really inspiring. It's just like so beautiful. And like we take that as costume designers. And we're like, oh, I would love to see, you know, someone wear a dress similar to this. And we may redesign it, we may copy the same thing, we may change the fabric, but it's always very obvious as costume design that it's homage to the designer that would inspire by. Yeah. Yeah. What do you feel like are the biggest challenges facing your industry? Um, right now, honestly, the economy, there's a lot of, as you guys know, corporations are taking over everything. So instead of us working for studios that understand the art of film and TV making, we're working for tech companies, like we're working for Apple, working for Amazon. They don't really care about the artistry of it. They just care about the product. So we're working with a changing artistic environment, a changing economic environment, and these companies are like combining and you'll see like a lot of your favorite TV shows are gone. There's like a lot of diversity that's gone. Like they even got rid of oh, what's the one on HBO Max? I can't remember. Wow. It's the ballroom one. Pose. No, not pose. Oh. Ballroom on HBO Max. No, not Which one? Legendary? Yes. Oh, oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> not like that. No, gone. No. Gone. And it's like that show and its own like really showcase a very niche, beautiful culture. And because it's not lucrative. Yeah. 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 That's so that's what we're facing right now is seeing our industry completely change. Like yeah. We are we have never started. Is it, it's funny you said economy. I'm like, well, wouldn't economy, bad economy, be good for TV? Because people can't afford to go out there watching more TV. But I guess, yeah, it kind of I guess not sense. if yeah. if it's all combining at the top. Yeah, yeah, makes sense. Yeah. Um, how about biggest opportunities? Biggest opportunities. I mean, I submitted two of my shows for Emmy nominations, which is the first time I've ever done that. So we'll see what happens. Yeah. Uh, there's chances to do that. There's chances for awards. And also, like at the end of the day, you get to see your work on a screen. Other people who you've never met get to see your work, and that's really cool. Yeah, that's cool. What is that process like to, to submit your work for award shows? So now they have it that the companies will, like Disney hires a company, they reach out to you, they're like, hey, we want to submit your work. Can you give us all the members of your team, and then what episode would you like to submit? And then once it's submitted, then you start your four-year consideration campaign. 
host everything, you do all the rounds. Yeah. Basically stick a leg out and be like, who wants to know? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's cool. That's very exciting. We'll keep our fingers crossed. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what is your biggest piece of advice for students? Obviously, people in the room here all have, well, not everyone in the room is pursuing design. All that most people are. Um, but clearly they're at FIT, studying fashion. So what's your biggest piece of advice for students? Um, although my favorite word is no, always tell yourself yes. They will tell you you can't, you should not, it's not a great idea. If you think it is, just do it. Like, who are these people to tell you that what you have in you is not right, is not the best decision, that you can't be the lead designer, that you can't come up with your own brand? Just do it. Like, people always say you should back yourself, you should believe in yourself. That really is the best advice because you have to remember that everyone's looking out for themselves and they are looking out for how they can use you to benefit themselves. So once you come into the situation knowing that you are the only person who will ever truly advocate for you, it just kind of changes the game and changes the room. Like they may say, no, we don't want you to be our junior designer. Okay, great, I'll start my own brand. Like, I don't have to do what you want me to do. You don't have to follow anyone's path. Like, you can figure it out whichever way works for you. To you. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'd like to close out my questioning with four questions that we came up with on the first day of class that we want are asking all our guests. Of course, yours are slightly tweaked since you're not a new history, but um, I guess the first is what advice do you have for yourself as a, as a new graduate? If you could go back and talk to yourself then. Um, I think my advice as a new graduate was. If you're not working, you should be preparing yourself for the next job. Like, there's really no lost time. Even if you aren't getting the job that you want to get, how can you prepare yourself to get that job the next time the offer comes through? Yeah. I think always staying ready. You know, sometimes staying ready means that you're self-care and you're not doing anything. Like, just yeah. make sure like what you're doing is propelling you forward in whatever way that looks like. Yeah, yeah, that's great. I, uh, I, I remember someone told me that as a costume designer, they just like to ride the subway train and see interesting oh, people, people and like, you know, oh. Oh, remember that person, yeah, I'm gonna need that. I creep so hard, I put my sunglasses because I'm like, oh yeah, see you, like moving people up and down. <laughs> yeah, can imagine. Um, what do you feel is the most important thing you learned on your first job? Stay out of the gossip. Stay out of it, stay out of it. When you hear them talking at tea, you can just put your headphones in and act like you don't hear. But feel free to listen, but just stay out of it. You don't want your name in the mix. You want your name to be mentioned when they say so-and-so's talented, so-and-so works hard, so-and-so is about that business. You never want it to be so-and-so is this, yeah. so-and-so. Yeah, you don't yeah. you don't want your name to be associated with that. So I would say stay out of the gossip. That's, that's really good advice, because I think that applies in any industry, no matter where you go. No matter where you are in life, stay out of the mix. Yeah, yeah. What, what do you hate about the film industry? I hate that people put value on the years you've done it and on the talent you have, which I'm sure you guys all know as a young artist that they look at you, well, you haven't done it 20 years. I want to go with someone who's done it 20 years, even though you may have the right experience, the right ideas for it, I hate that there's still value on credits and not as much value on talent. Uh, I don't know if this question can make sense, but what is the biggest macro trend that you see happening in cost of data design for the next five years? I think there's going to be a trend towards moving away from fast fashion, moving towards more stylized, interesting pieces, because I think our audience is smarter. Like, they'll look at something and be like, that's a made girl chain. Like, I know where that comes from. And you want it to feel special. So I think moving away from things that are easily accessible to more curated pieces, I think that's what it's going to go. Yeah. Love you guys. Yeah, it's great. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Well, thank you. I'm sure there are questions from the students. Hi, guys. Um, Yeah. <laughs> no, I, I, I noticed you are um, specialized in TV specifically, and 
I'm sorry, to focus on your early career. Um, and what would you say, or what drew you to TV rather than movie, and what would you say like, the biggest difference is between the two? It's easier for me to get into TV as a young minority designer. Mm -hmm. um, I don't really want to do like lifetime movies. It's not really my thing. Like, I want to work on projects that have a certain level of credibility, I guess. And it's easier to get into TV than it is to film. But I have to really try to get into film. Mm -hmm. And can you do, you feel like you can do that here in New York as well as in LA? Or in general? The New York market's shifting because of the tax credits. So a lot of projects are moving New York. So if you want to work on things that are interesting, you can't really do that anymore. Um, and then my other question is, historically, um, design houses and fashion design influence houses um, have worked on films um, uh, in the past. And lately, I think that hasn't been necessarily a trend or something that's happening. But do you think today these houses and fashion designers have a place in costume design? I do. It still does happen um, for, what is it, Billie Holiday versus the People of America. Uh, the designer reached out to Prada to do some of her jumpsuits. It happens, it's not as publicized as it used to be. Um, Prada is definitely one of the houses that I think collaborates the best with designers who've worked with them, who we were at the Met, like they love doing things that are outside of the world. I think a lot of houses now are so focused on celebrity that they're forgetting that design extends beyond Instagram, beyond TikTok. Like it really exists in you know, store installations, like in any aspect of visual artistry. So I think that is where we're lacking that collaboration is that we've kind of moved away from design houses wanting to be outside of celebrity. Thank you. Thank you. Me. Uh, you first. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, regarding like film, I just wanted to see what you prefer. Obviously, um, I feel like recently with COVID, since everyone watches like TV series much quicker and like a week rather than how it used yeah. to be. With um, picking out things, what do you think, which type of series for, I'm just saying like Bridgerton, people like, not criticize, but people were saying how it wasn't as historically accurate with, for example, like La La Land or Euphoria because it's so in the present. It's like how do you pick things for film that is in the present, so say, compared to trying to be historically accurate and like hip, I don't know if that makes sense. No, it does. Like, so the reason why people said Richardson wasn't historically accurate because the construction, the fabrications, it's a fine line we do it between doing like stylized period, which is what it was trying to be. Sometimes people get it like Outlander, like that series, they did a really good job of combining like the 40s with like the 1600s yeah. and like that was one of the best design shows. Um, it's hard because you may think it looks bad as it looks so good and then people will serve you like, yeah. mm -hmm, that's not it. And the same thing with modern, like you want to do sometimes modern that feels a little period, a little different. And it's like trying to find the balance of the two worlds that it's not overbearing. Some people can do it, some people can't. That's not and then also just one more question. What is your favorite, whether it's film, Broadway, TV, this may be a difficult question, but what's your favorite um, just like costume design, like all time. of all time, like that. Yeah. It's a hard question. Yeah, <laughs> it's a hard question because it kind of depends on what mood I am. Yeah, I'm in. Um, honestly, it's not really costume design. It's '90s music videos, like high okay, cool. it's like all of that really beautiful Missy right. Elliott. Oh, like, yeah, I can't stand the rain. Like yeah. that kind of really dope you know, late 90s music videos, like that's really where I get a lot of inspiration because they were taking stuff from Japanese anime, taking things from the 70s, like just that interesting niche of like hip hop and R&B, like for me, that's where I get a lot of inspiration from. So cool, thank you. Thank you. Thanks. So mine's a two part question. So um, do you see the costume design jobs are harder to get than fashion design jobs as it's like a smaller industry? And then the second part of that, is there, is there a hardest? Like I know you said that it's easier for you to get into TV than film, but like what about like, you know, opera or like Broadway or like something like that? I think costume design jobs are harder because there's only one designer. 
there's not really junior design. It's like you have ACDs, but you tap out with each ACD you have in your apartment. So you won't have an MTO ACD that has an ACD under them to help them source the fabric. Like they're kind of in charge of the whole thing. So I do think like the limitation of positions does make costume design harder. Um, what was the second question? Like, because if you're trying, you're thinking about like, if you go to Ray, yeah, there's a right. head designer, but then right. there are like, I mean, you have the East Coast, you have the West Coast, right. you have like the international. Sweaters. And right. The it's pants. not that yeah. varied of positions in costume design, and you're saying hard. Well, it's like the hardest, like the certain kind of the hardest, like film, uh, theater, like opera, TV. To break in. To break into or to do? To do. I think the hardest kind is collaboration mm. where you have people who want to work with you who get like you have certain limitations sometimes you only have three people in your department you can only do so much if people understand that it makes it easy but you could be on a multi-million dollar film like I have friends that are working on a new Marvel Daredevil and it's hard because they can't take photos of it unless you sign an NBA unless you sign this thing you have to have a certain badge it says you can take photos of the actors you should just be able to do your job but it's more difficult because there's more at stake so it's really like for me the hardest is when people are fighting against you doing your job gotcha. that's the hardest so it's more based on limitations rather than yeah 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 okay. like, to, to say like doing a small theater thing is harder than enough you may have more artistic license on a smaller theater play than you do on the large big budget projects yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> So uh, you mentioned like talking about how there's no like students anymore, and um, you are working with more so for those tech companies. Is there ever like a chance where that kind of works in your favor, and they kind of don't know what they're talking about, and you're able to kind of slip in, or is it just like budget wise? So the problem is working for these tech companies is that they do think they know what they're talking about, and you're like, well, you know, we have to do this so that the character feels good. And then you have an ad sales department, like, could we make that logo smaller? And you're like, it's the 90s. It has to have big logos. So it does make it harder. I don't know if it's ever going to be We'll talk. <laughs> yes, me too. Um, would you ever see yourself working with the fashion design industry or like consider working in it? So that, like, all the um, if it was a capsule collection, yes. I am not talented enough to come up with costumes, like, out of just the blue. Like, what fashion designers do is so inspirational. Like, that a fashion designer is like, I'm going to do a collection. It's going to be based off this thing. It's this huge, beautiful collection with accessories and dresses and a wedding and all this stuff is beyond the scope of my talents. And I love taking that thing and then putting it towards a character. So, I can't think of, I don't know if you've ever met anyone, but I can't think of someone who's gone that direction. I think a lot of fashion designers they go that direction, yeah. Yeah. but I don't know. Yeah, I don't really know anyone who's gone to fashion. Like, you're obviously, a designers. you're a creative person who, like, who gets and likes clothes yeah. and likes to dress, but Designing for that woman or that ideal person, I don't really have the brain to do that. I'm like designing for a character, and there's kind of like a script that guides me along. Uh, Didn't Adrian, Adrian go the other way? You, Adrian? Yeah. Yes. That's what yes. I thought. You did like yeah. a line after. Yeah. 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 I've been like Adrian's. Like, yeah. Line. I know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just a girl from the box. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, who wants to race All Stars yeah. season two? Yes. Who is your favorite queen? Yeah. I did not have a favorite. Really? Everyone was equally complicated. <laughs> Everyone was equally fabulous. Oh God, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. There was really, there really wasn't a favorite. It was just working on the job was amazing because they just, I think, Alaska won, yeah, and they did. just found out when they got there. So there was a lot of whispering of like who won. Mm -hmm. So just being around, so you know, queens who were at the height of their art form, their artistry, like they created that persona, like that was the exciting part. Because I can't tell them this is who your character is. I'm working with them to find a moment for that character. Mm -hmm. so. right. yeah. Yes. Um, um, what do you enjoy in a show that already has seasons like Grammy? Yeah. Um, what's your like um, developing that character that's already established? Does it make your job harder or easier? That's a really good question. So it makes it 
different, not necessarily harder, because there's already a foundation of the character. And I just want to take it to a place where it's my aesthetic that you're seeing, but you have to kind of make it connect to the character's past. Like, Rami can't all of a sudden start wearing, you know, the fly scare because it doesn't make any sense. Like, it has to connect to what the story is. So it's different, but not harder. I think it's actually a different design aesthetic if you're coming up with the character yourself and it's like the first season, you have freedom to do whatever you want to do, but you also have a studio telling you that's not what we want to see. So it's different. That's a great question. Anyone else? 